In this video, I'm going to explain to you uh, the web design steps. Now, these are kind of steps I made up. Uh, I uh, read other people's design steps, and I added actually a couple more. And uh, I'm, we're going to take a closer look at the first step: is the uh, scope of the project. And uh, but first of all, I'm going to explain to you why we're diving into this unit. Well, it's simple. There's a couple. There's a few reasons. The first reason is it seems like. Uh, if it's not totally obvious to you, everybody has a web page. Everybody is on the internet, whether you like it or not, and there's a lot of critics to this. People seem to be going to the internet as the first place to look for information on a business, on organization, on a volunteer, a anything. Um, it's just become this huge pool of information, um, and every single business, every organization, every agency, every uh, institution, every volunteer agency, every single soccer team, everybody <laughs> has a uh, uh, has has a web page, has web content, and all their needs are different. That's the first reason. The second reason is. Um, well, you don't exactly have to be an expert in this whole field in order to um, in order to say that you can do it. Now, first, what I mean by that is, I'm going to show you one particular method on how to design web content. One of out of probably hundreds. Uh, I don't think any one person can be familiar with every single method of getting data or information on the internet. With that being said. If you once once you understand the process enough, once you understand the different options, you could be the person to head up that project. You could be the person in your organization to take the lead on getting content or getting information or or, or, or getting a project uh, started, seeing a project through the end. And uh, what we're doing here is um, with what you're going to be creating in in this tutorial. Well, you know this could be evidence that you have a little bit of experience in in this area. Uh, and maybe if you do it well enough and have enough uh, examples, you could even put it on a resume and uh, be able to show somebody that you actually have some experience doing this and that you never know where that might give you that extra edge to get that job or career placement or co-op placement or, or what have you. And the third reason is, is of course, uh, I have to teach this because it's in the curriculum. <laughs> so the web design steps as I see it are as follows. Scope. Understanding the scope of the project. So if you're working with a client, working with a customer or friend, um, whether you're doing free or paying for it, do you understand enough about the project to uh, to, to, to get started on it? To, did the customer tell you everything that you need to know? The answer is basically always no. That will never happen. So more on that later. Choose the technology. So the next step is once you understand the scope is to help your client or your friend choose a technology uh, to use to get the content they need on the internet. That depends on a lot of factors, which we'll uh, talk about later. Design the look and feel of the site of the web content. Create it. Populate it with content, pictures, text, videos, what have you. Deploy it. Get it on the internet so people can find it. And then maintain and upgrade it. So those are the, those are the steps involved in uh, web design. So I want to talk a lot more closely about the first step and that is uh, that is scope so I'm going to go through a series of questions the first one is what kind of s what kind of site does the customer want do you need a dynamic site a static site will it require a database a static site such as this one rock cod cafe a very uh, a small restaurant um you know not a lot of um not a lot of uh a, a small restaurant you know it doesn't matter who's looking at the page um the content is probably going to be the same okay uh it doesn't matter uh you, you can't log into it uh the menu probably stays relatively the same okay um and it it, it it's just you know it's a static website now facebook probably the ultimate example of a dynamic website the content of the uh, of the web page of the Facebook web page totally depends on who logs in every single person who logs in shows a different content okay so it's different content it's dynamic it depends on who you are and what you're viewing what you're allowed to view and um, you can enter information okay and when you log in it can process the information and, uh, and, and show you different content depending on who you are 
that is a dynamic website. Okay, here's another dynamic website, uh, one that where you, you you can add stuff, add inventory. You could buy stuff. You can take a credit card payment. Again, you can log you, you can log in. You can track your orders and whatnot. This is uh, and these two dynamic dynamic websites, Facebook and Amazon. Those are also database driven websites. There's a lot of data involved, and it needs to be stored somewhere, and it also needs to be retrieved. So, do you understand the scope of what of what your your customer or client wants. Okay, what kind of website do they need? Okay, the next one is who's the who is the intended audience and how does it affect your design? Is your intended audience preschooler parents? Or is your intended audience um, you know uh, builders? How does that affect the design of the site that you're about to create? What age group? What is the intended audience? What what is their age group? What is their demographic? What is their income? What what are they looking for? What is the purpose of your website? Are you trying to sell a product? Okay. Are you trying to sell an idea? Or are you trying to change people's minds? Okay. Again, how does that affect your design? Did the customer present effectively present the scope of the project? Okay including the uh, tech details for example did the customer tell you or the person you designed the website for did they tell you that, that they need the site to be able to be viewed on an iPad in which case uh, anything that's Flash or Java won't show up okay or does it need to be viewed properly on uh, you know a, a 40 inch monitor and at the same time people that are using their uh, smartphones it also needs to be viewed on a smartphone too and viewed properly on a smartphone how do you do that all right did the customer tell you that I, I highly doubt it and finally regarding scope do you understand web web technology enough to present viable options to your customer so what you're gonna do or the client or whoever you're designing for so what you're gonna do is you're going to Give the customer options, explain to them the advantages and disadvantages of each option, uh, and then you're going to let the customer decide what they want to do. You don't decide for them, or I, I guarantee it's going to come around and bite you in the butt later on. Okay? You present the options, and they decide. If they ask you, well, what do you recommend? Well, you present the options, make them understand them, and then, and then let, let, let your customer decide what to do, and then hold them responsible for that. So some other uh, some other um, things you might want to consider regarding scope is how often will the website need to be updated? So for example, this uh, tiny little rock cod cafe. Um, how many times do you think this uh, this website needs to be updated in one day, in a week, in a month, in a year? Okay. Now Amazon.ca. How many times does this website need to be updated? Probably updated every second of the day. Every time someone makes a purchase, it, the, the website gets updated, basically. So, how do you accommodate for that? How many people will be updating the website? So, in the case of this one, how many people do you think are responsible to update the website? Now, in this one here, look at all these departments here. And for each department, look at their sub-departments. How many people do you think are, up, are, are responsible for updating the products in this website? What is their IT skill level? So, of the people who need to update the website, how good are they with with IT? Should th should you need to be a computer programmer to update a simple little website like this? Okay, uh, and the answer is no. Well, how how would you accommodate that? Well, actually, with the with the with the uh, method that we're learning uh, uh, this year, um, this will be entirely possible. You don't have to touch a line of code in order to update the site as as a, as an owner of the site. Are they going to are they going to be tied to you for their updates design content? So every time so if you design this website for, for this company or your client, are you going to be tied forever to updating the website? How much are you gonna are you gonna charge? What if you're not there? Okay. Those are some of the things to think about. Okay. How many different levels of user? Will there be will there be a need to expand the website in the in, in, uh, in the future? Okay. Can you predict the future? Well, the answer is no. Okay, so in this case here, now is this is this uh, is this cafe going to be um, a nation, uh, a continent, a worldwide chain 
uh, as big as McDonald's? Well, you don't know. So, do you, do you build a website that is capable of expanding to that level or not? Uh, difficult question to answer. Will there be a need later to add more functionality? Okay. So, in the case of, of of this website, do you do you will this ever be a a, a website driven uh, uh, a database driven website where people can log in and log out? Okay. Again, hard to hard to answer these questions unless you can predict the future. Will it be an e-commerce site where you display products, track inventory with online purchases? So, now what kind of technology uh, would deal with this? How how would you accept a credit card payment? How many people will be viewing and using the website? How many people will be viewing this one compared to this one? What is the bandwidth requirements? Believe it or not, uh, we all take for granted that uh, information on the internet is free. Well, it's not, because it costs the company's money to, in order to send this web page out to out to you and me. Now, if if only ten or twelve people are, are viewing this every hour, you know, or a few dozen people a day, it's not going to cost you hardly anything at all. But if you have millions of people viewing this every second, that's a lot of information that has to get out. And that costs money. What kind of data will the website transfer? Text, images, video, files. Okay, again, that you know. So, what kind of data is this transfer? People are, are are people downloading things, watching videos? Okay. Uh, what about this one? Okay. Now, what about this website? Oops. What about this website? What kind of data is going to be transferred? How much bandwidth do you need? So those are some of the questions that uh, involve scope that needs to be answered, Qu uh, and quite a lot of them. And um, you know, uh, and the, as I said, the uh, the level of technology that's involved in, uh, in 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 websites these days has just skyrocketed in the last five or six years. That uh, um, so, anyways, let's uh, let's dive in and get started.